Shalom and good evening. This is TV7 Israel News broadcasting to you from Jerusalem and in today's top stories. Israel accuses the Islamist Hamas organization of forcing Palestinian businessmen and patients that are permitted to enter Israel to act in the service of the internationally recognized terror organization. Moscow accuses the West of failing to control violent Islamists in Syria, a fact which indefinitely delays the resumption of peace talks. Iraqi Prime Minister threatens Turkey to stay out of his country, warning that if there will be a conflict, Baghdad is ready and Ankara will pay a heavy price. A violent clash erupted this morning at the Western Wall in the Old City of Jerusalem between some 200 members of the Jewish Reform and Conservative movements on the one hand and officials with the Western Wall Heritage Fund and ultra-Orthodox worshippers on the other. The clash erupted after police granted permission to the group of Reform and Conservative worshippers to enter the ancient compound with eight Torah scrolls which was perceived by the ultra-Orthodox worshippers at the site as violating the regulations for the holy place. Thus, upon entering the Western Wall Plaza, the ultra-Orthodox worshippers at the scene violently blocked the group of Reform and Conservative worshippers, despite the large number of police officers who were present. People who took part in the procession, including rabbis and leaders from conservative and reform communities in the United States, said that the failure to implement a cabinet decision that would safeguard the freedom of worship to all streams of Judaism had produced a dramatic worsening of the crisis in relations between diaspora Jewry and the Israeli government. Now to another matter, Israel accused the Islamist Hamas organization which controls the Gaza Strip of forcing Palestinian businessmen and patients that are permitted to leave the Palestinian enclave into Israel to act in the service of the internationally recognized terror group and to transfer information, equipment and money to Hamas prisoners and to the group's activity in the West Bank. According to a statement by the Israeli coordinator of government activities in the Palestinian territories, Major General Yoav Moldechai, the names and pictures of two Hamas operatives, Ibrahim Adwan and Muhammad Salem, who are stationed at a Hamas checkpoint set up near the Erez crossing between Israel and Gaza, are in charge of recruiting Palestinians into the service of Hamas before entering the Jewish state. Now with regard to the ongoing conflict in Israel's northern neighbor, Russian Defense Minister Sergei Shoigu accused the West of failing to control violent Islamists in Syria, a fact which had indefinitely delayed the resumption of peace talks. Shoigu said that rebels backed by Western governments had been attacking civilians in the Syrian city of Aleppo, despite a pause in Syrian and Russian airstrikes. Separately, a Kremlin spokesman said that a temporary pause in Russian and Syrian government airstrikes on the rebel-held eastern part of Aleppo was in force for now, but could not be extended if the rebels did not hold their attacks against a government-controlled western part of the city. Western-backed rebels fighting alongside the Al-Qaeda-linked Jabhat Fatah al-Sham launched an offensive last week against government-held western Aleppo, more than a month into an operation by the Syrian army to retake the city's rebel-held eastern districts, which it had already put under siege. During the course of the rebel attack, dozens of civilians were reportedly killed in what the United Nations said may constitute war crimes. Such high numbers of civilian casualties suggest that armed opposition groups are failing to adhere to the fundamental prohibition under international humanitarian law on the launching of indiscriminate attacks and the principles of precaution and proportionality. The reported use of ground-based missiles along with the use of armored vehicles loaded with explosives used in an area containing more than one million civilian inhabitants is completely unacceptable and may constitute a war crime. Since October 18th, Russia and its Syrian allies have halted air attacks on Aleppo after Western governments accused Moscow of indiscriminate targeting of civilians that caused a large number of casualties, an allegation Moscow denies. The halt in airstrikes on Aleppo is fragile, however, as Russian President Vladimir Putin warned 
that its continuation depended on the behavior of moderate rebel groups in the embattled city and their western backers. Nevertheless, the United Nations warned that all parties in Aleppo may be subject to war crimes, including Russia. All parties in Aleppo are conducting hostilities which are resulting in large numbers of civilian casualties and creating an atmosphere of terror for those who continue to live in the city. Strikes against hospitals, schools, marketplaces, water facilities and bakeries are now commonplace and if proven to be intentional, may amount to war crimes. The Russian top defense official Shoigu, who was addressing a meeting of Russian military officials, urged the West to determine who they are fighting, Russia or Al-Qaeda, since the rebel groups continue to fight alongside Al-Qaeda-linked militants. Безвинные люди в результате терактов в Бельгии, Франции, Египте, Ираке и других странах. Minister Shoigu also referred to decisions by European governments to refuse a Russian fleet bound for Syria to dock in their Mediterranean ports to refuel or take on supplies, saying he was surprised by their move, but it had not affected Moscow's naval mission. Now to Iraq, where Prime Minister Haider El Abadi, speaking at the Kayara military airbase south of the city of Mosul, said that the Iraqi forces were trying to close off all escape routes for the thousands of Islamic State fighters inside the embattled city, while stressing that the Islamic State militants will either die or surrender. نحاول نغلق على داعش من كل مكان وإن شاء الله نقطع رأس الأفعى. أنا يعني أنبئ جميع المواطنين في نينوى وفي الموصل بالذات أنه سنقطع رأس داعش هؤلاء الأبطال سيقطعون رأس داعش سنحيط بهم من كل مكان ليس لهم مخرج ليس لهم مفر ما عليهم إلا الاستسلام أما يموتون أو يستسلمون Iraqi security forces and Kurdish Peshmerga fighters started an offensive on the 17th of October to drive out the extreme Muslim group from Mosul with air and ground support from a U.S.-led coalition. The Iraqi Prime Minister also threatened Ankara, which demanded Turkish involvement in the operation to recapture the city of Mosul, saying Iraq does not want a war with Turkey, but if there will be a conflict, Baghdad is ready and Ankara will pay a heavy price. Now to Saudi Arabia, where police forces have arrested at least eight suspected militants plotting a major terror attack. The Saudi Interior Ministry released a statement saying the militants are members of the Islamic State and were arrested in the northern district of the capital, Riyadh. This investigation the eight arrested suspects included two Pakistanis, a Syrian and a Sudanese, who had been seized after intensified security investigations. Authorities revealed that eight Saudis and a Bahraini national are among suspects still at large. Thank you for watching us. You can also watch us at tv7israelnews.com or tv7.fi. For any comments, please send your emails to israelnews at tv7.fi. For more updates from Israel and the region, please join our Facebook page at TV7 Israel News. Praying for the peace of Israel and the peace of Jerusalem. I'm Jonathan Hassan, have a Erev Tov, and we will see you again tomorrow at the same time. In order to donate to TV7 Israel News, please follow these simple steps. 
First, press the Donate logo, located at the bottom left side of TV7 Israel News Facebook page, or on the Donate tab at the head of the page. Then insert the amount you'd like to donate, and fill in your credit card information. Just like this. And press Review Donation and Continue. After reviewing your donation details, please press Donate to finalize your donation. That's it! Your donation is now complete, and an email with your donation details has been sent to your email address. You can also print your donation receipt by pressing the link here. Thank you for supporting TV7 Israel News.